So I have this friend. His name is Doug. Doug loves a good espresso and craft beer. But then again, who doesn't? He's a year-round bicycle commuter. Oh, and the view from his condo has lots of cranes. We were at this party. I don't know exactly who started it. There was a bit of a debate. Something about which is more important to Alberta's economy, cities or the rural areas? <sighs> Doug said cities, of course. They have the largest populations, blah, blah, blah. I'm a big know-it-all. That's Doug. Don't get me wrong, I love the guy. It's just that I work for a pretty cool organization called AAMDC. And I know exactly how much rural areas drive Alberta's economy. So I presented Doug with the challenge. Spend some time with us, visit the places, meet the people, then decide. He accepted my challenge. I even found a film crew and we were all set to go. And then Doug no-showed. Typical Doug. But that's okay. I found a workaround. This is gonna be interesting. So we hit the open road, on our way to District 1. All one really has to do to understand how important agriculture is here in rural Alberta is simply look out the window. Despite its prominence in Alberta, we know that Doug still has much to learn. Our first stop is with third generation cattle rancher and counselor of Willow Creek, Glenn Elm. In the ag industry, we're always striving to be more productive and more innovative, and I, I hope Albertans are proud of the ag industry. I mean, I hope they're also proud that they can go to the grocery store and, and buy products that are safe and and they know where it came from. Is there anything you'd like to say directly oh. to Doug? <laughs> Doug, I hope that you learn that, that we need you as much as you need us to produce the food that you eat. So I hope you re you'll learn that uh, we need to be in this together. And with that, we were off, but not before taking in some of the local scenery along the way. Next on the list is Ryan Casco, CEO of the Casco Cattle Company in Lethbridge. It, it's an important part of the economy, we purchase a lot of cattle from ranchers, we purchase a lot of uh, barley and other feed for cattle. But one of the, the risks that we're facing right now is crumbling infrastructure in Alberta. There's a bridge just a few miles from my farm that we can't cross anymore. Uh, a school bus can't cross it. We need to invest in improving our infrastructure because it really is the, the backbone of our operations. And without good infrastructure, we just can't efficiently operate. People are passionate about what they eat and they want to make sure that crops are raised responsibly, livestock are raised responsibly, but they don't know what really happens and, and so I, I encourage people to, to learn more about how it's done and I think they'll be happy with what farmers are doing today. What a journey it's been so far. Everyone has been so welcoming to us and to Doug. We're pretty sure that had Doug learned anything from this visit, it would be that agriculture is not just a way to make a living, but a way of life. And now it's off to District 2. As we enter District 2, we already know that Doug would have had a lot to think about. Next up, we're meeting with Dean Cooper, Reeve of the Municipal District of Bighorn. Dean has already hinted that we might be surprised to learn which big, big, hugely important resource is being managed in his district. Uh, actually, our most precious resource in the MD of Bighorn is water and it has to supply the city of Calgary. It has to supply all of the irrigation agriculture out on the prairies east of Calgary. Uh, 
we have to be very careful because rivers can become oversubscribed. We have to find some distribution mechanism that isn't based on thinking at the turn of the 1800s into the 1900s. There is enough water in Alberta, but not everyone may be holding the water licenses that they need today, and I suspect it's going to become more frustrated in the future. Could you look at him and just <laughs> really make him understand that rural Alberta is where it all starts? Doug, I think you uh, live in a city, and we respect the fact that you live in a city, and we need cities too. But Doug, you have to understand that you're not divorced from the rural landscape, and to be a good steward of that landscape for uh, as long as you need it, and as for as long as your children need it, and the children of your children need it. Dean also insisted that we visit the Lafarge cement plant next door to see firsthand how a 100-year operation is moving towards a more sustainable future. We are standing on a world-class limestone deposit. That is why the plant has been here for over 100 years. Limestone is the key ingredient in cement. Cement is the binder in concrete, which we use every day, from our homes to our schools, our sidewalks to our hospitals, from our bridges to our skyscrapers. The plant expansion behind me represents a 60% increase in our production. It also represents a lot of environmental upgrades to our plant. A 60% reduction in our sulfur emissions, a 40% reduction in our nitrogen e emissions, as well as significant reductions in fugitive dust, noise, and light impacts. We recognize that we are working in the valley, living in the valley, with people who are very passionate about the environment. We're very much committed to making sure that we can continue to find that balance between lifestyle and industry. At this point, we were starting to feel an even stronger bond with these rural communities and their breathtaking landscapes. We were pretty confident that had the real Doug been here, he would have been feeling it too. What a difference it's been, going from the open landscape of District 2 to the lush forests of District 3. The crew and I are really starting to get a sense of just how beautiful this province and its people really are. Our next interview is with the mayor of the aptly named Woodlands County, Mr. Jim Rennie. So I was born here and it's a forestry community and one of the things I never knew until I stepped in the role of mayor is exactly how sustainable that the forestry industry is. For every tree that they cut down, they plant two to three more trees. So this is going on every year. They have a hundred year plan. I can't think of another business that is looking at how to keep their environment that they're working in healthy for a hundred years ahead. And if they do a good job of it, they're going to be successful. Us here in Alberta, uh, rural Alberta, have many thoughts on city boys. But Doug, I gotta say, you top the charts. But what we want you to know is, Please have a good understanding of what we have here because rural Alberta has so many great examples of environmental friendliness, ways that industry can work together in partnership. And when the forest industry is healthy, our community is healthy and Alberta is healthy. Next, Jim arranged for us to visit the Alberta newsprint company, ANC. ANC is really interesting in the sense that it takes what would otherwise be unusable wood chips from other forestry mills and creates high quality paper. We were delighted when Technical Director Gary Smith offered to take us on a tour, after a safety orientation, of course. Welcome to ANC, where safety is no accident. Something tells me Doug wasn't paying very close attention.
A major risk for rural Albertans living in the forested areas can be wildfires. The devastating impact of the 2011 Slave Lake fires resulted in an unlikely partnership between three neighbors, the town of Slave Lake, Lesser Slave River, and the Saw Ridge First Nation. You have to build trust first. That is number one, is trust. We're all coming from the standpoint of wanting to make our region better, and, and we've got that level of respect and that level of trust for each other. Um, and once you have that, really, you can do anything. But it's, it was tough to get there. We had to go out on a limb to make it happen. Just take a leap of faith. Uh, once you get to know each other, you're going to find you have a lot more in common than you have differences. And with that, you can actually get a lot more done. Surely if these three could find a way to not only cooperate, but grow together, then there is still hope for Doug and his stance on rural Alberta. What a testament to the character and resilience of the people of this proud district and province. Now it's time to head further north to District 4. Surrounded by boreal forest, the county of Grand Prairie is part of the breathtaking Great Plains region. First up on the agenda is a sit down with Bill Rogan, CAO of the county. Now I think we could all guess that the energy sector plays a very large role in growing economic development opportunities in rural Alberta. But we thought it was important to ask Bill his honest opinion about this sector and its relationship with the county. Rural Alberta understands the uh, positive impact the oil industry has as far as uh, assessment and, and what they bring to our communities. Well, certainly the oil industry, uh, oil and gas industry, have been uh, major contributors to the social infrastructure in the county, uh, whether it be arenas, uh, schools, lunch programs. The new museum that we've just recently built has an oil and gas wing in it, and oil and gas uh, companies have been generous in their support of that. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a very good uh, relationship. Is there anything you'd like to say to Doug? Oh, Doug. Okay, let's see, what am I gonna say? It's the rural area, it's uh, agriculture, oil and gas, forestry, that, uh, that feed many of our urban neighbors, uh, whether it's uh, providing employment or putting the food on their table. It was time to get up close and personal with the oil and gas industry. And we were so excited when Donald Rowan Community Relations Advisor at Incana Corporation invited us over to learn more. Here at Incana, we produce uh, liquid-rich gas, which provides everything from heating your home to the gasoline that you use in your car to drive down the road. We respect rural Alberta so much because it gives us the opportunity to, to work and live in the areas that we operate and it lets us be the good neighbour that, that everybody wants us to be. While we visited the control room that oversees over 3,000 well sites across Alberta and BC, an alarm was sounded at one nearby and Canna operator Trent offered to bring us along to inspect the call. The real Doug's a pretty hands-on guy, so we know that he would have appreciated the extra time and attention that Trent put into helping him understand the ins and outs of his role as a field operator. With our road trip winding to an end, it's time to pack it up and head back down south, to East Central Alberta. Hard to believe the trip is already coming to a close. We've learned about so many incredible opportunities out here, but along with that, many complex challenges. We've traveled back to the open skies of the prairies in District 5 to meet with Sheila Kitts, CAO of the County of St. Paul. We'd like to hear her thoughts on what rural Alberta needs to do to remain competitive. I think just working collaboratively, uh, municipal government, provincial government, industry, municipality to municipality, um, you know, making sure that that uh, Northeast Alberta, in our case, is, uh, is the place that industry wants to set up. 
I've always lived in a rural setting, and so for me, uh, living in rural Alberta is, is just a wonderful place to raise your family. There's less stress, there's space, you can look up and you can see the stars at night. This is the last stop on our trip, so what do you think is the most important lesson Doug would have needed to learn? Oh my God. <laughs> well, I think sometimes uh, people in the city might forget that uh, rural Alberta is where it all happens. It's where it all starts. Um, it's, it's where your food is produced. It's where um, the gravel comes to make the cement in your city to build your roads in the cities. Um, it's uh, the oil and gas industry is not in the cities, it's in rural Alberta. It's what keeps uh, our people employed. It's, uh, it's the driving engine for the province. We're learning that building and maintaining transportation infrastructure is the single biggest expense in rural municipalities. Sheila thought we might be interested in visiting the county aggregate pit to see just how in demand gravel is from this area. We wanted to learn more about what we as Albertans can do to ensure the future growth and competitiveness of the rural communities. Sheila introduced us to Bob Bezpalko of Alberta Hub for his perspective. Basically to understand what's happening, to ensure that we understand the needs of business and industry because what drives the growth of a community or a region is business and industry. Transportation logistics would be the focus for investment and, and to maintain for any uh, uh, industry to grow, oil and gas, agriculture, tourism that's critical to our area, future investment to maintain our transportation corridors as well as to grow and, and to meet the needs would be the number one focus. It's been a truly informative and educational experience. We're so grateful that all these kind people could take the time to meet with us, show us the land and the industry. It's unfortunate that the real Doug passed up on this opportunity because I believe that he would have had a much better understanding of just how significant industry is out here and how absolutely essential it is to continue to recognize and prioritize economic development in rural Alberta. After all, this is where it all starts.